Yo guys, this is a game for my stream against Jace in D2 MMR. I went electrocute with Nimbus Cloak and Ignite, just the classic electrocute page. And also I was trying out Eclipse into Axiom and Grudge. Just of course exploring new builds and everything, trying to navigate the new split. So yeah, let's see how this game went. So my jungler ended up warding their wraiths, so I don't have to go there and do it myself. But if you have to ward against Jace, then you should go early on. So maybe like 110 instead of 125 or 130 because he can chunk you really hard um, as he's an AD champion. So against AD range champs, try to ward the wraiths early or just don't go at all. And right here I walk up because I want him to melee range Q me as it does AoE damage to the wave. And that's really important. So it's pretty similar to major, major matchups where you want them to push the wave in. And, you know, you can't really do anything except AD range champions deal more damage. So going Doran shield is not really as good because the damage is too much and you'd much rather stay outside of their ranges. Right there, I got that XP on that minion way further up. So staying in XP range and just letting the wave push towards you is what you want to do. And yeah, as I was saying, it gets AD champions that are ranged. So that's Jace, Lucian, Tristana. You don't want to walk up and let them poke you too much because the damage is way too high. And going Dodge Shield is probably not as good. Whereas going D Shield against Mages is pretty fine, pretty good against like Oriana or Nico. And yeah, right here, you know, when the wave is like this, right under your tower, or not under your tower yet, but really close by, you want to try your best to thin things out. Obviously, I don't want to take too much damage because I've already lost all of my potions from the earlier trade. And this ends up being a pretty good situation for me. The wave's not too big. And that's your goal in the early game. Is to just farm and try to avoid waves that are too big on the enemy side. Because then the enemy will get too much of a roam timer. And it's fine to use a W like that if you need to farm. Although I guess I didn't really need to. Um, but in the early game you know you can't do damage. Like level 3 I'm going to lose all the trades. So we just play it nice and slow. Miss my E on the minion, which is unfortunate. But yeah, this is just the early laning phase against Jace. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you want to wait for your first recall. Right there, I just combo him. But, you know, not using my W there is also quite a viable strategy. Probably maybe better to just not W him and use it on the wave instead. Because now he gets a recall. But right after this, I realize I have Ignite. He has TP. So I need to recall straight away. Otherwise, I'm going to get stuck in lane. And he's going to have heavy, heavy advantage. And that's basically the first few levels against Jace. So now I'm back in lane. I'm about to hit level 5. And I want to show you guys a little way you can trade against Jace. Place a W behind. Walk up. Use your auto E. And then take your W when he jumps on you with his Q melee. Because um, then you'll dodge his Q damage. As long as your W is further enough away. If your W is too close to you, then the AoE will hit you. So be wary of that. And then right here, I go in with my W knowing that I can hit the Qs as soon as you see his uh, melee range Q animation. If you have a W out, you can throw the Qs exactly where he's going to land and they will always hit. And yeah, we get a nice little kill there. So now I have a nice little wave on my side of the lane. Trundle is going to gank and we know that Jace has no flash from the last fight. So a good way to combo is W, E, Alt. But this is especially decent against Jace because he's going to use his Q to push you back or his E, whatever it is. And then you're going to have your W ready to jump to just in case, as well as your alt shadow. So you have two places where you can go. And it's really helpful, I think, against Jace because you can choose to take your W to go more aggressive or take your alt shadow to get away as I flash away. And this flash right here is not too bad because I need to shove the wave. And Zach's E is on cooldown now, so we can get the wave shoved and we can base. And yeah, everything's fine. Okay, now we're back in lane. We're level 8 with Eclipse. I want to show you guys a combo you can use, which is especially good with Conqueror when you're ahead around these levels. So we walk up, we use WEQ. The Qs land, so at this point we need to evaluate. Well, my Qs landed, so I could probably go in and try to kill him. And then I take the W, I ult, and as soon as you come out of your ult, you spam Q first, and then you auto E, especially when your ult shadow and you is in sort of just a line like that. And the good thing about that combo is you can evaluate whether you want to go in with your WEQ if your Qs land or not. If they don't land, then you probably don't want to go in. And you know, at every stage of the combo and the fight, you kind of have options 
So it's pretty good and it's especially good with Conqueror as you'll be able to abuse the sacks as you go in and you ult them. Now we're back in lane, we have an extra pickaxe from last time and we're going to hit this tower with six grubs. Me and Trondle hit it together and I'm thinking we're probably just going to leave it with one plating. Which is a bit of a mistake, or a bit of a mistake by me because I just woke up and I'm like whatever, I'm going for it. And that combo right there on Jace is pretty good, so use your WE as you think he's going to jump on you with his K melee Q. And then you ult him as he's mid-air. And then you take your W and it gives you decent position. Because you take your W and you Q similarly at the same time. And your Qs will likely land because his Q in melee range jumps to a fixed position. So yeah, that was kind of decent. We get a kill even though we have to flash. Now I have Eclipse, Axiom and Longsword with Boots. So I sweep through. Gonna kill this Jinx. The ward was actually not in the bush, I think. So yeah. And I just want to show you guys something right here. We W, W, and then we auto E. And then at the end, we E again. So we got six seconds refunded on our W, which is kind of important to use our W there and make sure we get the maximum amount of CS. If I didn't do that, I would have missed one CS, I think. So it's just a small thing. But these small things kind of add up over time. After that, I end up taking the tier two bot tower. And I'm going to check the camps. I check them and there's no camps. So now I'm thinking about recalling. But then I realize that a fight is kind of brewing mid lane, so we walk over. Unfortunately, I don't have W because I used it on Grump, which is a mistake. Because I have to open with ult against the Lulu ult. But then I use my W forwards before the Lulu ult knocks me up. And that allows me to chase onto the Jinx. And then at the end, we hold the ult shadow to make sure we can dodge the Zac E in case he goes in. I end up going bot lane after that, which is important to do when you win a fight in mid lane or something. It's best not to just pile into mid. And go to a side lane instead so you can absorb no more resources as a team. Uh, now I get waves bot. But then unfortunately my team goes in which is quite bad. They end up dying. And I see a ward and I'm thinking well they're going to walk away from Lulu. And Lulu is going to clear the wards so I can probably kill Lulu. And we just do that. I end up igniting him thinking that I can't be bothered. You know he's living with 1 HP. And then right here we want to use our W backwards. And take it nice and slow, baiting all the spells like that. It was kind of good, kind of fun. And I observed that Jinx, or not Jinx, Gwen is coming. So I try to bait them a bit. I know that this Gwen is decently strong. So I just want to go in and take the kill. And Zack flashes away. So something I want to show you guys is when you're clearing camps like Gromp, you should use your W in the bush to get some vision. I end up finding Jace. I'm like, oh, okay. And as I'm chasing him, I see Lulu behind me as well as Zack. And I'm thinking I might just die. But then they leave him for death. So we ult, we W, we Q and everything. And then we dodge his spell by using shadows, which is something you can do against Jace. If you use your shadow when he uses his melee range Q and it's far away enough, then you can dodge damage, which is very, very important in the mid to late game. I end up recalling because I secretly want some montage plays and I don't want to end the game. So yeah, we walk here. Just W combo the Jace, take the W, then all to E. E the Lulu again, which is pretty important, so we can get a W up. Secure it on the Jinx as we ult and we W away. And yeah, quick little triple kill. Now my team is fighting mid, and as I'm walking up, I'm thinking about how to engage. I have flash, so a good late game combo you can use is the WQW flash auto E. And they don't really expect you to come from so far away, so if you come from the side or if you flank as well, it becomes a lot more effective. As we chase down the Lulu as well. Right here in mid lane, my Braum is getting caught. And I'm thinking about how to use his passive to my advantage. So I combo the Cho'Gath. And now I'm going to go in because YOLO. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I ult his ult. And then I auto him to get the Braum passive. Use my W to get away. But then I can't win against Flash Point Click. And I end up dying. Which is quite sad. But then after that, my Braum flashes in. We kill Lulu. Um, we kill Zack because he jumps in as well and we end the game. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and all of that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.